Welcome once again to the Tin Dog Podcast. It's nice to be back. Did you miss me? This week, we're going to be talking about Torchwood episode 2.6, Reset. Before the episode aired, there was a lot of talk on the internet with it being called Reset, that it might actually be the story where everything gets put back to normal. A sort of origin story, but that's the sort of thing fans talk about. What's it going to be about? Let's look at the title. But of course, you know better than that, don't you? You know to hang on and actually watch the episode. But when did you watch it? Did you watch it on BBC Three? Did you wait till it was on BBC Two? Did you acquire it via some sort of demon thing? Did you use the BBC I interactive player thing? Ah, now that's where I've got a little issue. You see, thanks to the fact that Torchwood is on one week before it's on, if you see what I mean, on ordinary TV, that gives it a fortnight, two weeks to people who don't use the word fortnight, to download it. The shows are meant to be available online for one week. But if you go to watch again BBC Three, you can watch the episode for one whole week. And then if you go to watch again BBC Two, you can watch the same episode for another week. So will that double the BBC I players' audience figures for that show? Will they be added together? Is it some cunning ruse? Or is it just the fact that the show is shown on two different channels and that's what they have to do? In order to try and get this show out, before the following episode aired on BBC Three, I must admit I gave in and watched Reset on a recording I'd made from BBC Three. And you know, that logo! Oh. My. God. Who selected that? They're normally annoying, they're normally in your face. But it's bright. Pink. What are they trying to say? I know Torchwood has a certain pink element to it, but not the programme itself. It's rubbish. It's just not, I mean, it's a lovely typeface. It's well executed. If you have to have a logo, it's a perfectly reasonable shape. Just bright pink just makes you stare at it and stare and stare like some strange alien... Sorry, I'm digressing again, aren't I? Same as usual. Have a drink. I've rambled long enough about how I watched the episode. Someone emailed me to say, and I won't use their name, that the podcasts have become a little bit too short for their liking because they listen to the podcast in the bath perfectly reasonable place to listen to the podcast. I'm not quite sure if the headphones from their iPod would get wet, or if they've got one of those nice speaker systems, but it did get me thinking about where do people listen to the podcast? Whereabouts? Am I in your lives? Am I on the bus with you, travelling to school or to work, in the car with one of those nice iTrip FM signal senders coming out of your radio? Am I on your sat-nav system? Where are you listening to me right now? It's just something of interest, really. You can email me at tin-dog.co.uk. The person who was complaining, well, not complaining, more sort of mentioning that the shows had got shorter, had a valid point. The reviews of Torchwood had become quite short. The reason for this is mainly because I didn't have a lot to say about them. They were perfectly reasonable episodes. They were well executed. They were indeed a major advance on last year's product, but they didn't truly inspire. Also, the same person wondered if I was going to reintroduce the Who Mix theme tunes, which I'd love to do. If people want to give me the permission to use their tracks, they can send them to me via email and I'll upload them. The person called Jex, who did the Who Rhythmics a few weeks ago, also gave me permission to use their other tracks, so I'm also going to finish today with another track called Exiles in the Fourth Dimension, which has got some fantastic samples and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Please don't skip to the end just yet, though, because I haven't actually reviewed the episode yet. So what did I think? Well, you know I enjoyed it. You know I liked it. Martha returned, which is a great thing. Not that I was ever Martha's greatest fan, but it's nice that this show has got more Doctor Who touches to it. When Doctor Who was taken away from us in 89 and Virgin Novels came along, they were the nearest thing to Doctor Who we had in the gap, a sort of methadone of Doctor Who-ness. And that's what Do- Torchwood is. It's something that's almost, but not quite, Doctor Who, filling up that gap in between seasons. And the more references that we get to the old classic series, or to the modern series, the happier we are. Martha was reference number one, but reference number two was even better. Unit. Oh, 
it was lovely to have Unit back, and not just standing at the back wearing their lovely red berries. More of the red berries later. It seems that there was an issue with the use of Unit. Of course, it used to stand for United Nations Intelligence Task Force, but the United Nations, I don't think, were actually asked if they could use the name, admittedly in a fictional setting. Or perhaps they're just a little bit too close to home, and there really is a unit working for the United Nations. It would make sense. In fact, I'd be slightly disappointed if there wasn't something like unit in existence. But that's just the old X-Files fan in me. So it looks like something can be called a unit, as long as they don't mention the UN. I mentioned it once, I think I got away with it. Before watching this episode, I only knew one thing. I knew, well... Before watching this episode, I only knew two things. One, Martha was returning, and two, Jim Robinson would be in it, playing some sort of scientist. I kinda guessed that. Now, he's not called Jim Robinson, of course. He's called Alan Dale, I suspect, but... We're science fiction fans, we don't like using people's real names. We like referring to them usually as the thing that they're most famous for, stroke ashamed of. Because we're basically nasty pieces of work. And so the guy who's been in West Wing, um, Lost, um, Dark Angel, uh, was it Dark Angel? I can't really remember. He's done more American TV than you can shake a stick at. And all of it quite impressive, turned up in Torchwood, which is a very good thing. However, halfway through, I started getting the feeling there was something up. The minute that Owen and Tosh almost got together, my mind started wondering. It started setting off small alarm bells going, um, if this happens in a horror film, surely one of the characters dies quite soon, but, but we're quite settled. We, we know everyone's here. Nobody's going to get killed off or shot, are, are they? But then, of course, I remembered that Russell used Buffy as a template, and I don't want to give any Buffy spoilers away. But not everybody makes it out alive. Not everybody makes it out alive out of every season. But it's quite rare that somebody gets shot, so obviously mid-season. I was unaware that the actor playing the cheery, chirpy, cockney monkey boy um, is going to be in uh, Curse of Steptoe and Son, which was a stage play I've not seen but really wanted to, but I think the BBC are making it, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. He's got the voice, he's got the look, it, it should be very, very good. So if he's gone off to make that, that's fine. If he comes back in some sort of ghost format, that'll be great. But of course, by the time you hear this, some of you will have seen the next episode. I know I haven't, so I'm not going to make any predictions either way. It was a good episode. I terribly, terribly enjoyed it. I'm glad Torchwood is finally finding its feet and it's going from strength to strength. Whether there's room inside Torchwood for two doctors, I just don't know. But it was nice to hear a reference that everyone was under and the same Doctor. It wasn't a perfect episode, by any means. Uh, certain moments, like some of those crash zooms, and they belonged in Robin Hood. It was almost as if they had some spare arrows, but I'm sure we can forgive them. Very soon I'll be doing some more podcasts on the Five Doctors, and of course that special anniversary special that I promised you last week. I just used the word special twice in the same sentence. If I'd written that down, I would have given myself a good slap. The only sub-reference that I haven't pointed out is that when Martha Jones is sort of strapped down, she introduces herself as Sam Jones, and as we all know, Sam Jones was the Eighth Doctor's not-so-visible companion. Whether that was a nod or just a nice wave to us who bothered to read some books, I'd like to think it was. I'll leave you now with that aforementioned track. Be seeing you. Have you ever thought what it's like to be wanderers in the fourth dimension? To be exiles? Have you? I can see by your face that you're not certain. You don't understand. <laughs> the point is not whether you understand. What is going to happen to you?
have been listening to the Tim Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.